What does a bunch of bored engineers do in COVID lockdown? We make a video. Disclaimer, no animals or even people were traumatized in this video. So enjoy. Have you heard of cold recycling technology as a solution for the performance of our roads? Give me a couple of minutes. So as the global road network approaches 20 million kilometers of surface road with even more gravel roads, the focus of the road authorities and pavement engineers turns to maintenance in order to preserve this valuable asset. Maintenance and rehabilitation is not without challenges. Budget limitations, heavy vehicle traffic growth, and impact of climate change stretch the boundaries of road performance. Typically, distressed roads show cracking, rutting, and potholing. This damage is structural and cannot be treated with old remedies such as milling off and replacing the asphalt surfacing. Over the past 30 years, a select group of pavement engineers, Loudoun International and their associates, have been working on solutions to preserve the life of the road called cold recycling technology. This technology includes recycling and strengthening the distressed upper pavement layers with flexible and durable stabilizing agents, bitumen and active filler. All this without having to heat up the aggregates, hence the cold recycling. The team devised a four-step solution to implement cold recycling technology. Firstly, investigate the pavement structure. This requires a combination of testing procedures to evaluate the road and its materials. Specialist tools are used to diagnose the type of damage, the source of the problem in the structure and its severity. This leads to solutions to treat each uniform section of the road. Recycling of material, reduction in transport distances and energy consumption, along with many other benefits, makes cold recycling a favorable solution. Secondly, a mixed design is carried out to determine whether cold recycling is a suitable solution. Aggregates and blends from the road investigation are used to perform a mixed design with either foam bitumen or bitumen emulsion. Tests determine the optimal active filler and the percentage of bitumen required. Triaxial testing is used to ensure the optimal mix has the necessary shear strength to resist rutting and provide high performance under heavy traffic. Bitumen stabilization provides the benefits of flexibility and durability in the base layers. Once the mix design has been completed, structural design is done to determine the thickness of the pavement layers required for sufficient pavement life. The pavement investigation provides necessary information on the supporting layers and the mix design captures the necessary BSM characteristics. Different pavement design approaches can be adopted. Two common methods are the pavement number and traditional mechanistic empirical design. When it comes to construction, there are two ways of producing a bitumen stabilized material. You can either use a large recycler and treat the material in situ, or you can use a specialized mixing plant to treat selected material. In situ treatment will always be more economical, primarily because you've removed most of the transport costs. However, you do need to know what's in the existing uh, pavement and you need a specialized crew. Selecting material for mixing and plant removes the guesswork, whilst paving the treated material all but guarantees a perfect product. However, it's more expensive, primarily because of the transport costs. Each project is different, and the best construction method is dictated by numerous factors. That is why you need expert advice. And the team that's been helping Vertkin as their technology partner in recycling for the last 30 years is Loudoun International. Thanks for watching this.